let's conclude our series on living by faith. And I hope I'll be able to drive home some things this morning. It's not as if it's the end of faith, but we need to go into something else beginning from next Sunday. From next Sunday, we'll begin to open ourselves to discuss worship. But this morning, I want us to look at the fruit of faith. I want to make three statements before I go into teaching you. Number one statement I want you to take home. You can tweet it if you want to. Believe that there is always an answer. Take that home. Believe as simple as it stands. As simple as it sounds, believe that there is always an answer. Number two statement I want to make is, there is nothing good about a problem, so don't dwell on it. There is nothing good about a problem, don't dwell on it. A third statement I want to leave you there for with is focus on the answer, not the problem. Focus on the answer, not the problem. So let's do justice to what we have given a tag, a title fruit of faith. The word fruit therefore evokes something in your mind. What does it evoke? It evokes a plant. But for a plant to bear fruit it must grow. Faith grows. Faith is like a seed on your inside. And everyone has this seed. Remember Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of the things hoped for. So figuratively I could look at it this way. It's a seed that I've been given. And I need to plant that seed. And nurture that seed. And manure that seed. And the general term in agriculture is cultivate it. Culture. Cultivate it. And give it time to bear fruit. So I want to look at this from three aspects. Number one, ingredients or factors that enhance faith. Number two, faith expressed as a confession that bears fruit. And number three, faith expressed as labor that bears fruit. Let's begin with the first one. And let's take a reading from the book of Second Peter, chapter 1. Verse 5 and verse 7. Second Peter chapter 1. Before I read this, I want to say something. Every plant will need soil, will need manure, we need air, we need humidity, we need temperature. We need certain minerals in the earth to grow. 
So let's have that at the back of our mind while we read this scripture. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to verse 7. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. What is the meaning of virtue? Virtue means moral character. You can't be doing 419 and say you're expressing faith. You can be lying, cheating, blackmailing, gossiping, When you do that, you don't expect your faith to yield fruit. So add to your faith virtue. And to virtue add what? Knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of God. Knowledge of God's word. Knowledge of the ways of God. Know the word. For it is only the truth that you know that can set you free. And to knowledge, self-control. What is self-control? Moderation. Not being excessive. The world today is lacking self-control. Self-control in eating. Self-control in your dressing. Self-control in your speech. Weigh what you say. Think about it before you say it. That's self-control. Self-control in your talking. You walk into a place, everybody is quiet. Be quiet with them. Only you start talking. Cha -cha 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 -cha. Self control in anger. Something is said. Everybody heard it. You are the only one that is angry with it. self-control in your bitterness what are you being bitter about what does that mean self-control it means be in charge of your emotions mama sorry that I need to use an example that consigns the both of us it's not specific it's not about what happened it's about the lessons there was a day we had dedications and after the service she decided to visit some families who dedicated in their homes so the protocol dropped me at home. And while we're leaving the house, we forgot. I'm using the word we so that... Um, <laughs> so that the offense will be less. And so we forgot to bring out soup or stew. So by the time they dropped me at home and I, the protocol people, men left, I opened the, the fridge. There was nothing. When I mean nothing, there was food. But they were all frozen, blocked. And I was very hungry. And anger rose up in my inside. Why would this woman do this? What is her role as a helper? 
after the preaching, I got home. Nothing. And in that anger, I took control of my emotions and began to ask myself questions. Oh boy, this one that you're fuming all by yourself, you are the same one that is hungry, you are the same one that is angry. The person you are angry for could be somewhere eating chicken. <laughs> Eating rice, enjoying herself. You are hungry, you are angry. I advise myself. I checked the fridge well. I saw some tapioca, and I love tapioca. And I saw some dry fish. I gave myself a good meal. Now, I know that when it comes to food, when you say you, this food is dressed, this food is this, this food is this, it is only here. It, all food are the same here. It's only in your mouth. When they get to this place, and this place is food, they don't give a damn whether it is jollof rice, whether it is Chinese rice, whether it is, no, if you like, let it be some filler. It doesn't matter. So I ate my stomach full, brought out one small wine, drank it, went upstairs, removed my shirt, slept well. Self-control. Some men that day fire and brimstone will come down. You are hungry, you are angry, you are frustrated, your peace is lost. Self-control. Add to your self-control what? Perseverance. The ability to keep moving in the face of adversity, in the face of obstacles, trials, delays, temptations, but you keep moving. Faith, add to it perseverance. Add to perseverance, godliness. What's the meaning of godliness? Simply put, godliness means imitating God. Imitating the character of God. God is holy like we were singing this morning. So be holy. God is merciful. So show mercy to people. God is compassionate. So be compassionate. God is love. Be loving. Godliness means you are desiring a life that is close to the life of God. We know we are humans. But you can live these things. You can practice these things. Add to godliness, brotherly kindness. Being kind, being cautious, being considerate, preferring one another. You're a young man, you are sitting on a seat. And then an older person comes and you know there is no other seat. Get up and give that seat out. I watched a short clip where a boss was full and an elderly person walked into the bus and everybody was looking at each other who was going to give out their seat and nobody gave out their seat and then a beautiful lady got up and gave out her seat interestingly she had one leg so she was holding crutches and everybody 
those who have conscience not everyone has a conscience everybody felt bad about it brotherly kindness don't be mean to your brother to your sister don't be unforgiving someone has done me something I can never forget nobody is asking you to forget you are not an imbecile but we are asking you to forgive drop it of what use is it to you anyway it's like picking something from the dustbin and, and filling it in your hands drop it and add to brotherly kindness what? love the Bible says faith walketh by love when you put these ingredients together to your faith your faith will always bear fruit number two I said faith expressed as confession to bear fruit you must pick up faith is not meant to be quiet faith is not meant to be taught about I'm thinking about it you know the Bible says we've been saved by grace everyone here we are saved by grace it's not by what we did by what Christ did for us but that grace can only be expressed or applied through faith we are saved by grace through faith somebody say with me I'm saved by grace through faith I'm saved by grace through faith I want you to understand the word true saved by grace through faith you must say it Proverbs chapter 13 verse 2 my preacher up there get awake Proverbs 13 2 a man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth a man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth what comes out of your mouth is described as what fruit Proverbs 18 verse 20 a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth from the produce of his lips he shall be what field when we started talking about faith we sat down and began to examine the book of Mark chapter 11 if we get back to that story in Mark chapter 11 how Jesus and the disciples were on a walk and they saw a fig tree and the fig tree was full of leaves looking so greenish as if it was bearing fruit as if it was carrying fruit and Jesus when they walked there there was no fruit and he spoke to the fig tree may no man eat of you again and they went their journey on return Peter observed that the fig tree that the master had caused had died and they asked the master look the fig tree you caused has died and Jesus took us on the course of teaching about what faith is and how faith is expressed and he said have faith in God have the God kind of faith then the next verse he said if you have the God kind of faith you can speak to a mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea it shall be done for whatsoever thing ye desire when ye pray when ye pray you 
shall have if you don't doubt in your heart. The whole thing that happened that brought about this was Jesus spoke to a fig tree and then began to teach about faith. Faith is expressed in your speaking. Faith is expressed when you speak. And the Bible says, you shall have whatsoever you say. You shall have whatsoever you say. If what you said is said in faith, you will not have whatsoever you say if it is not said in faith. And you will not have whatsoever you say if you don't believe it in your heart. What does that tell you and I? It means you believe in what you are saying. Now, Romans chapter 10, verse 10. How did we get saved? For with a heart one believes unto righteousness. I'm talking about salvation now. But only with the mouth is confession made unto salvation. You heard the word of salvation. That Jesus died for you on the cross and paid the price. And that if any man comes to Christ, he's a new creature. And you believe what you heard. And an altar call is made. And you walk out. And you make a confession of what you have heard. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. As you walk out of that point, you tell yourself that I am born again. I went to church today and I gave my life to Christ. You believe it in totality. You start foundation school. You tell everyone you see I'm a new creature. I'm a child of God. I'm born again. You believe it. Let me share this. A principle with you. Jesus said in Mark chapter 2 that that is the hardest thing to occur in the human life. When they brought a man through the roof and dropped it in front of Jesus, they busted the roof. The Bible said when Jesus saw their faith, he said to them, your sins are forgiven. And the people began to reason, who is this one to forgive sins? And Jesus asked a question, which is harder? To say thy sins be forgiven or to say, take up your bed and walk? Or rise up and walk? What does this tell me and you? It means that the faith and the process for you to accept salvation and be born again is harder than any other thing. Does that sound, come clear to you? No, it's not clear. Are you still here with me? Do you understand what Jesus was teaching? That means that the faith you used to get born again as a child of God. Remember you're saved by grace. What? Through faith. You applied faith. That that faith is the strongest, is the hardest faith you can ever apply. Lay your hands on your head, everyone. And say with me, Lord, give me understanding. Enlighten this word on in my inside. Let this word, let the truth of this word be engrafted in my heart. In the mighty name of Jesus. That means if I can get born again by faith, every other thing is easy. Every other thing is easy. Every other thing is easy. But here comes a problem. You get born again once. 
When you believe and confess your sin and repent, you get born again once. Just like a natural birth. So the confession you make to be born again, what you say to be born again is done once. But the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14. The last part of it says, let us hold fast our confession. Let us hold fast our profession. Does it mean we should be confessing every day? Lord Jesus, come into my heart. This scripture is not in reference to your salvation. It is in reference to other things like healing, like finances, like deliverance, like protection, like supplies. Hold fast to your confession. Why not salvation? Because Isaiah chapter 43 verse 25 Isaiah 43, 25 says, I, even I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and I will not remember your sins. God doesn't remember our sins. He's blotted it out. Christ has wiped away your sin. We play tricks on our hearts. We like going to a graveyard to do some digging. But for him, he has blotted it out. So when the Bible says, hold fast to your confession. Remember, we are talking about fruits of faith. Fruits are not formed in one day. If you plant a seed, that seed grows that same day and comes up and bears fruit that same day. You won't be able to stand it. You won't be able to pluck it. You won't you'll be scared. And Proverbs 13 calls our confession fruit every confession does not bring fruit only confessions that are done in faith Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 the Bible there speaks that our God is a God of faith and that without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Faith works in the realm of the spirit at all level. Faith manifests in the physical at all level. When you believe God for salvation and you confessed it, you got your salvation. I am saying here this morning, if you believe God for finances, and you understand this principle and you declare according to your faith it will be done to you the money we are looking for the money you are believing God for the finances you want they are not in heaven if heaven throws down money today in this place the windows of heaven gets open and God pours money here now it will be counterfeit it will not have a central bank number if it does have it is still counterfeit because it is only the central bank that can give a number not heaven I'll show you a scripture that is interesting Psalm chapter 50 verse 10 
10, please. For every beast of the forest is mine. And the cattle on a thousand hills, they are mine. Verse 11. I know all the beds of the mountains. And the wild beasts of the field, they are mine. Verse 12. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. That's the word I'm interested in. Look at this last part. For the world is mine and all its fullness. For the world is mine and all its fullness. Listen, every gold, every silver, every naira, every pound, every dollar, every euro, every yen, every dime on this earth, they belong to who? God. For the world is mine and its what? Fullness. No wonder the Bible goes further to declare in Haggai chapter 2 verse 8. They say the silver, the gold, they are mine. When we cry to God for finances, God is not going to bring down money. Money is here. But there is a God of the world. There is a God of the world. There is a God of the world. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 2. Or 4 verse 4 rather. The God of this world has seized possession of everything. Of the wealth of the world. And when Jesus came, he took Jesus to a mountain and showed him. He said, look at the kingdoms. Look at all the wealth. They are mine. Jesus never looked at the devil and said it's not true. It was only when he came to worship that he rebuked him. There is a God of this world. The world is in his hands. But not. Habo sharaba koshara. When Jesus died on the cross, he defeated the God of this world and destroyed all his systems. For this cause was the Son of Man manifested that he will destroy the works of the devil. And I haven't destroyed the works of the devil. The Bible tells me and you that when we come into the kingdom, Jesus empowers us he empowers us with what? With authority. Authority to use his name. He said, all power I have received and I'm giving it back to you. When you have authority and you do not exercise the authority, when you have authority, and you do not exercise your authority, you will achieve nothing. First of all, you need to know the authority you have. You can only exercise this authority by faith. You can exercise this authority by what you say. You can exercise this authority by declaring the word of God. Not someone has taken hold of your finances, his authority has been removed and given to you and you are having the authority and you are doing nothing with the authority, you still will not take back that wealth. Hello, church. Hello, church. Hello, church. We have the authority, but we are not exercising it. And the world knows it. That's why the world will never want the church to preach about prosperity. They will fight against it. They will tell you it's about heaven. That we need to go to heaven. But before you go to heaven, he, the Bible says occupy till I come. You cannot occupy with empty hand. Occupy with the authority that you have. Exercise your authority. Now you want some money. It belongs to your father. He didn't make it for the devil. 
the gold and the silver that are God's, they don't, it's not for the enemy. It is not also for his children. It is for his own, God's own children. So you must understand what I'm teaching you this morning, that you must make the right confession when it comes to your finances, just like you make confession when it comes to your salvation. So you need to note and begin to declare Satan, take your hands off my finances. Take your hands off my money. Take your hands off my resources. And let the angels of the Lord, ministering spirits, bring to me the millions and the billions. In the mighty name of Jesus. Don't ever forget, but whatsoever is born of God overcome the world and its systems. Are you born of God? Are you born of God? Therefore, you are an overcomer. You can do this overcoming by exercising your authority. You must declare it. You must have faith in your heart. So at this point, I want you to note, he said, Beloved, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. Beloved, I take a pleasure in your prosperity. I take pleasure in your being rich. And therefore, I supply all your need according to my riches and glory. God's supply is also tied to your asking. Ask and it shall be what? Given. But you simply believe I'm a child of God. I'm in the kingdom of God. Why am I not wealthy? Why don't I have finances? You have authority, you are not exercising it. Faith works by saying. What you have is the fruit of your saying. Your life now is the fruit of what you have spoken yesterday. What you have declared. Whatsoever thing ye desire, when ye pray, believe, then ye shall have it. In prayer, the Bible, now that scripture is so interesting if you look at it properly. It said, whatsoever thing ye desire, when ye pray, believe, and ye shall have it. Give it to me, please. Verse 24. Mark 11. Therefore I say to you, what things soever you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. Believe in your prayer. Believe in what you have asked. And you will do what? Have them. Now, you might not have it now. There are things you can have now. There are things you might not be able to have now. There are things you can have in a week's time, in a year time, in four years time. And that's why it is necessary that you hold fast to your confession. You believe in what you're saying. And each time you declare it, the process is ongoing. The meal is driving itself. The principle is working. But as you keep speaking, as you keep declaring, if you believe, so you keep your belief, you keep your saying, until the fruit ripens. The fruit will take time to ripen. There are some fruits that will take time. For instance, you all know that the full payment of Hope Hills is ongoing. We have not stopped confessing. We have not stopped declaring. We know 
that at the end of the day we will have it. Hallelujah. You say it with a belief. You believe in the things that you say. Believe in the things that it will surely come to pass. So I'm just telling you this morning, keep believing. And keep saying, the fruit will come. The fruit is forming. The fruit will ripen. Keep declaring it. It shall come to pass. It has nothing to do with your feeling or with your sin. If I have the papers of hope he'll sign it. I don't need to ask about it any longer. Because it's, I have it. Faith is the substance of the things hoped for. The evidence of the those things not seen. So many of us here don't even know where Hope Hills is. You've heard of the, the name again and again. And you simply believe that there is a place called Hope Hills. What if I'm deceiving you? Hallelujah. Even if there are delays, there are setbacks. Keep saying. Keep believing. Keep declaring. I believe in what I have declared. I believe in what I am saying. I believe in what I have asked. I believe in my healing. I believe in my promotion. I believe in my deliverance. I believe in that job I have applied for. I believe it and I keep saying it. Whatsoever thing I desire in my heart as I say it and believe it, I have it. Just like I believe that if I confess that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior, I had salvation. So just do a little mind switch when it comes to finances. Do a little mind switch when it comes to healing. Do a little mind shift when it comes to provisions. Lastly, for lack of time, fruit expressed as the labor of faith expressed as labor. Faith expressed as labor. Faith is expressed in your work. James chapter 2 tells me, faith without works is what? Dead. As much as we are confessing, there are things that require your work, requires your hand. And whatever your hand finds to do, Ecclesiastic tells me so. Chapter 9 verse 10. Whatever your hand finds to do. Do it with all your strength. With all your heart. With all your mind. Do it with everything. Knowing that the works of your hand will prosper. And they will bear fruit. If you are found in the place of service in the house of God. Serve with all your heart. As you are serving God. God is the rewarder of all men. He rewards. No one can serve God and God will not reward him. No one. You want to know about service? Go ask Zechariah, the father of John. Busy serving God. Believing God for the child. Until it became too late. And God says to Zechariah in essence, I am never a too late God. I don't live in time. I live in timelessness. Serve God with all of your heart. Psalm 128, verse 1, the NIV. Psalms 128, verse 1. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. Verse 2. You will eat the fruit of your what? Labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. In Psalms 90 verse 17. The Bible there again declares. Psalm 90 verse 17. May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. 
establish the work of our hands for us, yes. Establish the work of our hands. One translation puts it to bless the work of our hands. The Lord blesses the work of our hands. And God wants you to put your hand to work. God does not like idleness. You find that in the New Testament, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Verse 10. The Bible here says, For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. If a man will not walk, shall not eat. Verse 11. We hear that some among you are idle. They are not busy, but they are busy bodies. Everybody's matter become their own. Is there in scripture? Yes. If you are busy working, you will not have time for stories. If you are busy working, you will not have time for gossip. God says, He who does not work should not eat. Young men in the house, there is so much work to do. Our educational system has spoiled a lot of things. Everybody is flying a piece of paper called certificate. Certificate is only an approval that you have a skill. You can't be skillful in where you are not gifted. Everyone has a gift on the inside. Everyone is gifted. Everyone has a seed on your inside that is seeking for expression. Give expression to your seed. Forget certificates. Schools are rounding up. And I had a testimony of a little boy, less than 10, solving quadratic equations in this city. Apparently, he lives in the same estate with me. Small boy. It's a gift. I was watching a three-year-old girl number every element in the periodic table. Three years old. I watch a four-year little boy play all the difficult classical music from Mozart to Beethoven to Shaskovsky, all of them, four at age four. Who taught him is the fruit that is on his inside, the seed that is on his inside. Every one of you here, you have a seed. The problem we have in life is this. Some seeds are easily expressed on the outside. Imagine that old culture, even though he's from the east, is selling in a labor market. He won't be successful. Even if he has the best certificate in marketing, the best certificate, a PhD in economics and all that, he will not excel. But until he discovered that the, the seed on his, in his inside has to do with his two legs and a leather ball. When you discover that seed, put it to work. You can turn that city into a skill by going to school in that area. In fact, my heart bleeds. Each time I look at our educational system, instead of people to think about how, what, what, what school will I put in my child so that they can discover his gift and allow him to express himself in that area. In fact, I learned of late that what we call coaching, you see, everybody says, I'm a coach, I'm a coach, I'm a coach. How, what do you know what it means to coach? Coaching what? Coaching is a gift. It's a specialized gift. You don't have it, you don't have it. You know who is a coach? A coach is 
a gift broker. The word coach came from when they were moving people from one part of the city to the other with a coach, with a cart, a coach. And the best language in the world that describes a coach is the Chinese. To the Italians, they don't call it coach. They call it maestro. The French call it tutor. But the Chinese, they call you a guru. And that is so, so profound. The word guru means darkness. The word ru means light. Someone who guides you from darkness to light. Makes you to discover that thing, that light that is on your inside that is buried in darkness. And guides you to express it to your world. When you come to that point, whatever you lay your hands to do, it begins to prosper. Young men, we were taught welding in school. Young men, we are taught how to make sweaters in school. Young men, we are taught needlework and all that. There is work to do in your hands. God blesses the work of our hands. Don't be a busybody. He that does not walk with his hands. Don't forget the hand is actually directed by the brain. This morning, as we round up this series, I commit you to the hands of God. Amen. And into his word that is able to save you and keep you. Amen. That good work that the Lord has started in you, he will accomplish it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your faith that you are expressing it from this house, you will see fruit in the name of Jesus. Amen.